everyone and welcome back to Nervous Nessie. Today we are packing for this trip that I have coming up in a couple of days and this is the second video for packing that I've made and I wanted to focus in this video about medicine. Um, how to pack medicine and how to travel with medicine, specifically flying because that is the most restrictive. And so we are going to cover different aspects about traveling with medicine. The first thing is, is you want to put your medicine in a clear plastic bag. Um, for one thing, it just, you can see what's in the bag. So if you have a lot of medicine, you're not digging into the abyss to try and find it. But the other thing is, is when you go through TSA, if you have your medicine in the bag, depending on what you're carrying, they're probably going to want to see your bag quite easily. Uh, this is just a clear bag that I got. Um, I think it had like lotion and other skincare stuff in there. And it, it actually still smells like the lotion. <laughs> Uh, but it was a really nice clear PVC bag that holds all of my medicine quite well. And yeah, I use this. Um, in the past, I've just used a Ziploc bag. Um, one thing to keep in mind, and this made me think of this, um, when you are traveling with your medicine, sometimes the medicine does not have the prescription label on the actual product itself. Um, maybe it's something like an inhaler and they can't put the prescription label on the actual inhaler itself. They'll put it on the box that the inhaler came in. You can take the box with you, obviously. It can fit in your bag. Um, but it just, that's one more thing to take up room. I did go on a trip once that I decided to leave all my medicine in the original packaging with the labels on there. I'm not even kidding. I took two gallon size bags for medicine. It, it was ridiculous. It took up so much room in my luggage and I've learned instead of doing that, take whatever it is. Maybe, like I said, it's an inhaler. It doesn't have the prescription label attached to it. Take a picture of the prescription label. That way, if you happen to go through TSA or if you're in an area and a police officer stops you and they're like, well, this medication is by prescription and how did you get it? you can pull up the picture and show them the picture of the prescription and you don't have to worry about anything. A lot of times people use the pill bottles, like the little organizers that have all the pills and they don't wanna carry all these you know, different bottles that take up a lot of room. So just go through and take a picture or if it's on the bottle, you can turn the bottle and maybe take a video of the prescription or just write down all of your prescription numbers and which pharmacy you use. That way, if something comes up, you have all of that available. Now, one thing you wanna do is put all of your medications in your carry-on bag. If you are flying, do not put it in your checked bag. Do not, don't, don't even think about it. Because if they lose your luggage and you don't get your luggage back, you can say goodbye to your medication. And if it is a medication that you desperately need, you're out of luck. There's really not a lot of options that you can do. You can try to call the pharmacy and tell them what happened, but sometimes legal ramifications of dealing out medicine at the pharmacy, it does not allow them to dispense anything extra. You're just out of luck. Or maybe your insurance won't pay for it. Yeah, you could get it, but your insurance isn't going to pay for it and it's going to cost you a fortune. So when you're traveling with medication, especially with flying, make sure you put your medication bag in your carry-on and have that with you at all times. If you're staying in a hostel, 
you're going to want to lock up your medication. Usually hostels, they have a locker and you're going to want to lock up your medication instead of having total strangers have access to it. Just make sure it's locked up. That way you don't have to worry about anything. Let's talk specific medications. How to exactly handle those. When it comes to medications, if it is liquid, you can put it in your medicine bag and it does not have to be put in the TSA approved quart size liquids bag. It can be in the medicine bag. It doesn't have to be in the liquids bag, even though it's a liquid. That could be, you know, liquid medication like this. It could be a liquid medication like a nasal spray. Even in the liquids bag, you have to carry things like creams, that sort of thing. So if you have any kind of creams, those can go in your medicine bag. They do not have to go in your liquids bag. With that being said, when you get to the airport and you're going through the TSA checkpoint, you want to tell the TSA agent, I have liquid medication because otherwise they're going to red flag it. Like you're bringing a liquid through. Why didn't you tell us about this? So just simply before you go through the, you know, the scanner where you have to hold your hands up and stand there barefoot or with, you know, your socks on, just say, Hey, I have liquid medication. Usually what will happen is when it goes through the conveyor belt where they scan your bag, and it comes out the other side, someone will be standing there and they will test your medication. For things like liquid in a bottle like this, usually what they do is they open it, they have a little strip. I, I don't know how it works, but what they do is they take the strip right up against it and they'll give your bottle a little squeeze to see if the fumes coming out are going to trigger that little strip. If it doesn't, then you're good. If it does, then you're obviously carrying something that's not medicine. They could go so far as ask you to dispense some of the medicine and then test it that way. Um, I have yet to have that happen to me, but I would imagine just a single drop is probably all they need, which really shouldn't mess with the amount of medicine that you have. It's not like they're going to ask for a full dose or anything like that. They just want enough to be able to test whatever it is that they have they need to test, a strip or a little dish or something. Like I said, I haven't had that happen to me, but if they do, they're not going to ask for a lot of the actual medication. Now you may be thinking, okay, well TSA is pretty strict about what they allow in carry-on bags. And can I carry things like needles? Maybe I'm diabetic and need to give myself my insulin or I have to inject some other type of medication in me. Can I take my syringes and needles? And the answer is yes, you can, sort of. Uh, you, again, have to have it in your carry-on. Uh, you could put it in your checked bag, but I wouldn't. That's not very smart. Um, the kicker is, is it has to be unused. So I carry mine in the original packaging. It has not been opened yet. Um, that way they know these are unused. You cannot you bring or shuttle back and forth used needles and syringes. Uh, you're going to have to dispose of them somewhere. Um, usually if you're staying in, at like a hotel or something like that, you can ask the front desk, do they have a place where you can dispose of used needles? And they'll have one of the boxes where you can drop your needles in. If not, look at a pharmacy where you're staying and say, hey, I'm vacationing and I have used needles. Can I bring them by at the end of my trip and dispose of them here? Because most pharmacies have where they can give, um, you know, things like flu shots. And so they're going to have a place to be able to dispense of needles. 
And if that worst case scenario, if you can't find something like that, just go to a local hospital and say, hey, here's the situation. Can I dispose of my needles here? Because it's always better to dispose of them properly versus just throwing them in the trash. But I will say I have had to just throw them in the trash because I either couldn't find a place to dispose of them properly or I didn't have time to find a place to dispose of them properly. But you can take needles and syringes with you in your medicine bag. Don't leave them floating around. Obviously, you wouldn't want them floating around in your luggage because it could break the needle and then you can't use it anyway. But you want to have your needles and syringes unused in your medicine bag. If you have medical equipment you need to take with you, take it. It's okay. Things like breast pumps, uh, CPAP machines, that sort of thing, you can take those with you. Obviously, again, you're going to want to put it in your carry-on luggage. Don't put it in your checked bag, but pack accordingly because a lot of times those can be quite bulky and it could be that the majority of your carry-on is that medical equipment. So think about that when it comes to packing. And if you have any kind of medical device on your body and you're going through TSA, you must let them know this. Go up to them and say, hey, I have an insulin pump in my back or wherever it may be, or even metal in your body. Let's say that you had a car accident and now you have a steel rod going through your leg. You have to let them know that you have that there. Otherwise, when you go through the x-ray machine and you're standing there, they're gonna be like, are you a robot? What's going on here? Usually, if you do have any type of surgery where they have to insert metal in you, maybe metal pins or rods, that sort of thing, they, the doctor will give you a card that you can take with you when you travel and you can simply show them that card. Sometimes it even has a picture on the card of the actual like x-ray showing where you have the pins or the rods or whatever in your body. Um, same thing goes with if you have a pacemaker. You obviously have metal and an electrical machine working inside your body and that's going to send off a red flag when you go through the TSA checkpoint. So you want to let them know, I have a pacemaker. That's it. They're going to look, they're going to see, okay, uh, you, you'd obviously do. It's not some device that's under your clothes, but on the outside of your body. They're going to see that it's actually inside your body. But it's always a good idea when you get to TSA to simply just declare. I want to let you know, I have an insulin pump. I have rods in my legs. I have syringes and I have liquid medication. I'm can I go? <laughs> so make sure you let them know that you have those things. Otherwise, it can hold you up at TSA and thus hold up everyone in line behind you because you didn't tell them that you have those things. If you're unsure on whether or not you can take a medical device or a specific medicine or something that I haven't talked about yet, go on the My TSA website get the app. I actually like the app. It's very user friendly and go on to the My TSA app or website and look at the bottom and you'll see the can I bring option. When you click on that, the screen's going to pop up and it's going to list in alphabetical order all kinds of craziness, like crazy. Oh, like, can I take a missile? Huh. It's on there. Um, but you can also at the top search syringes, liquid medication, and it will tell you specifically about carry on and checked bags, which one you can put them in or not put them in or specifics about it. And it's a very good tool to kind of double check before you go on your trip. And if you're bored, I, 
I highly recommend just scrolling through that entire list. TSA has a really funny sense of humor. I know they get a bad rap, but I find TSA to be quite hilarious because they put some really funny stuff on there. Um, yeah, scroll through because they love trolling everybody as much as everybody loves trolling them. And also check out their Instagram. Uh, follow TSA on Instagram because it is hilarious. If you're traveling internationally, check the laws when it comes to medicine before you go on the trip. Um, each country is different. They may require that you declare a list of your medications. They may, you know, decide that you need to put some type of proof, like a list of your prescriptions. Each country is different. So before you decide to travel to another country, check the laws in that country to see what they say about medicine. It could be that some medications you have to make a drastic change before you're allowed to take it into that country. Maybe it has to be in the original packaging with the prescription label. So before you travel internationally, check and see what the laws are there. And if you're going on a long trip, maybe you're backpacking for several months or you're going on a long cruise that can last a month or even longer. I know some world cruises can last almost a year, like it's ridiculous. But if you think about it, you gotta have your medication and you're not in your home country and how are you going to get your medication? You can reach out to your doctor, let them know, hey, I'm going out of the country from this date to this date. Can I get more of my usual medication? Because most medications are prescribed one month. You get a one month supply. Sometimes you can do a mail order and maybe get three months. But if you're going on a long trip, let's say you're going to be gone for six months to India, then how are you going to get your medication? You can't. So you can ask your doctor, can you write me a longer prescription for X amount of time? The only thing is, is if you have insurance, sometimes the insurance doesn't want to pay for the full amount. You can kind of play around with it and maybe call the insurance, talk to them, tell them what's going on. They may do an exception. If they don't, you might have to resort to talking to the pharmacy and saying, hey, for this particular prescription, I don't want to file it on my insurance. I want to pay cash. So my battery just died on my camera. That's lovely. Um, so we were talking about medication and I know I kind of went through the medication really fast today, but there's kind of not much to it. Um, put it in a clear bag. And if you have questions about whether you can take it, check out my TSA. And also, if you have questions maybe I could help answer, feel free to leave those in the comment box below and I will get to those. And I hope to see you guys in the next video where I will be packing my full luggage for this trip that I'm coming up on. And I'll see you then. Bye!